Hey, it's Darius. Cash basis to accrual in just five multiple choice questions. I'm on social media all the time. You can see me here on this Facebook group or maybe on the Great CPA Exam Club or maybe the Fearless CPA. Look for me on these Facebook groups. Here's a question that was posted to the group. It said, please, can anyone help to understand this from a formula standpoint? So I first read that and I was like, imagine trying to learn FAR from a formula standpoint. The, the problem with formulas is that you're memorizing and that's not the way to learn accounting. The CPA exam's got too much in store for you to memorize anything. Instead, you wanna understand what's going on and why. So here, this candidate was confused about cash basis to accrual basis. And they wrote down maybe what one of their CPA review courses ask them to memorize and that's just wouldn't be my approach now let me show you what my approach would be here's a typical question like that if cash collections were 25,000 and accounts receivable at year end was 8,000 and began the year at 3,000 how much is accrual basis revenue so you're going from cash basis revenue to accrual basis revenue am I looking to memorize something no I want to know that if I'm starting with cash collections that means that's how much cash was received. Now, where do I want to end up? I want to end up with how much revenue was earned, the top line number on the income statement, how much revenue was earned based on cash collections. So 25,000 was collected. Was 25,000 also earned? Probably not, because if accounts receivable at year end was 8,000, well then that 8,000 was earned in the current year, earned this year, collected when next year right so that means the 8,000 is not already in the 25,000 collected this year but it was earned this year so we're gonna add the 8,000 earned this year collected next year we add it why are we adding the 8,000 not because of a formula because it was earned this year and it'll be collected next year so it's not already in the 25,000 so add the 8 to what was collected so we're up to 33,000 was earned this year but accounts receivable began the year at three thousand dollars that means that three thousand dollars was collected when and earned when well it began the year at three thousand with accounts receivable that had to have been collected in this current year why because accounts receivable usually takes 30 60 days maybe 90 days to collect if that was the beginning balance three thousand you have to figure that by the end of the year that was collected so which means it's already in the 25,000 the 3,000 is part of the 25 but it wasn't earned this year it was only collected this year so we're gonna subtract the three why because it was collected this year but earned last year so we're gonna subtract the 3,000 not because of a formula but because it was collected this year but earned last year and if you don't subtract it from the 25,000, you're going to be double counting it. You're going to be counting it as revenue last year and this year. And that would be like Enron accounting. So subtract the three and what was earned this year is 30,000. Notice that accrual basis revenue is higher than cash basis revenue here because receivables went up for the year. We earned more than we collected. Why? Because receivables went up we earned more for the year than we actually collected by five thousand dollars that five thousand dollar increase in receivables this year represents five thousand more earned than collected so in a question like this where you're going from cash basis to accrual it's important to know where are you starting from and where do you want to end up we're starting with cash collected and we want to know how much revenue was earned all right what about this one here we have accounts receivable began the year at 5,000 and ended the year at 1,000. How much is accrual basis revenue if cash collections were $10,000? So now our starting point is 10,000 of cash collections, but which way is accounts receivable going? It's going down from 5,000 at the beginning to 1,000 at the end. The formula would only be confusing now because we're going the opposite way. So no, we don't want to memorize that. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to look at the ending balance of $1,000 of accounts receivable and say, when was it collected? When was it earned? Earned this year, $1,000. Collected next year. 
because it's the ending receivable balance, right? So that $1,000 earned this year to be collected next year. So add the 1000 to what was collected. Add the 1000 to your starting point of 10 and you're up to 11000 earned. Then you have receivable beginning balance of $5,000. Earned when? Collected when? Collected this year. Earned last year. How do we know the 5000 was collected this year? Because it was the beginning receivable balance. And it should take only 30, 60, 90 days to collect receivables. So that should easily have been collected this year at 5000 which means it's part of the 10000 But it wasn't earned this year because it was earned last year. So subtract the five, add the one, and what was earned this year was only 6,000, letter A. So know where your starting point is here. Cash collected, 10,000, and know where you wanna end up, how much revenue was earned. And then it's just a matter of looking at it like this. Collected when, earned when? Well, let's start with the 1,000. Earned this year, collected next year, add it. What about the 5,000? The 5000 is your beginning receivable balance. That was earned last year. Earned last year, collected this year, subtract it. Otherwise, you're going to double count it. So we collected 10000 and only earned 6000 And notice when accounts receivable goes down from beginning of the year to the end of the year, then we collected more than we earned. And that would make sense because when accounts receivable goes down, what goes up? Cash. Now they can ask you the same question with no numbers at all. Look at this. When adjusting revenue from cash basis to accrual, which of the following items would be added to cash fees collected? One, the ending balance of accounts receivable. Two, the beginning balance of accounts receivable. And again, I would say, what's our starting point? Our starting point is cash collected. How do we know? It says when adjusting revenue from cash basis to accrual, revenue now right the top line number of the income statement we're going from cash basis to accrual we start with how much cash was collected and then it says which of the following will be added to cash fees collected in order to know how much was earned the ending balance of accounts receivable represents what was earned this year won't be collected until next year add that right number one we're going to add roman numeral one what about Roman numeral two, the beginning balance of accounts receivable? Is that gonna be added to cash fees collected? No, that's gonna be subtracted from cash fees collected. Otherwise we'd be double counting it because that was earned last year. So the answer is one only, letter A. And believe it or not, candidates fall for these kind of questions all the time. And the FAR exam would consider this a basic question so far, we know that if you start with cash collected and you look at the change in receivable balance from beginning of the year to the end of the year, you'll be able to determine revenue earned. But what would make this a little tougher is if they gave you the unearned revenue account, the beginning balance, the ending balance for unearned revenue. And what's unearned revenue anyway? That's where you collect cash in advance. You get the money first and then you earn it. Just the opposite of accounts receivable where you earn it first and then collect it, right? Unearned revenue is a liability, and it comes up when you collect cash in advance of services. So let's say it's August 1st, and I collected $300 from a student who wants tutoring. So I debit cash, I credit unearned revenue, $300, and that's on August 1st. So let's say the student paid me in advance for three tutoring sessions on August 1st, so I made the entry, debit cash, credit unearned revenue for $300. We have an asset here and we have a liability here. Why is unearned revenue a liability? Because I have to either earn it or return it. So let's say by December 31st, we've had two sessions, but one session still remains. So at the end of the year, they'll ask for the adjusting journal entry and it would be a debit to the unearned revenue for 200, reducing the liability on the balance sheet and increasing earned revenue, $200 is earned on the income statement. So what if they ask you at year end, how much remains unearned in the unearned revenue T account, how much would there still be? And the answer is there'd still be $100 unearned. And that $100 of unearned revenue represents cash collected this year, but to be earned next year. Therefore, whatever the ending balance is of unearned revenue, we would subtract it 
from the cash collected for the period if we wanted to know how much was earned for the period. So if they asked you a question like this, the Keswick Theater collected 400,000 of cash receipts in the current year. They had unearned ticket revenues of 40,000 at December 31st year two. How much is accrual basis revenue for the year ended December 31st year two? So the starting point is cash collected, 400,000, but we want how much revenue was earned. They don't tell us about receivables, but they tell us that unearned revenue of 40,000 remains at year end. That's how much was collected this year to be earned next year. So then how much was earned this year if the 40,000 is part of the 400,000 collected? That means they only earned 360,000 this year, which is letter C. So the question asked, how much is accrual basis revenue for the year ended December 31st, year two? And all you had to know was the ending balance of unearned revenue gets subtracted from cash collected. Why? Because it was collected this year, but earned next year. Now, the way I would expect that they would ask you a question like that on the exam would be like this. They not only give you the ending balance of unearned revenue, they'll also give you the beginning balance of unearned revenue. So again, they want to know how much is accrual basis revenue for the year ended December 31st, year two. But this time, they're going to tell you not only is there an ending balance of unearned revenue, the liability account has an ending balance, it also had a beginning balance of $10,000 as of December 31st, year one, which is the beginning balance for year two. So what's our starting point? The same 400,000 of cash collected for the year. We collected 400,000. How much did we earn as revenue? Top line of the income statement. Well, we know that the ending balance, the 40,000 of unearned revenue, represents what we collected in year two, but won't be earned until year three. So subtract the 40, and if that's all we had, then we would have earned 360,000, just like the last problem. But they gave us a beginning balance for unearned revenue this time. 10,000 started the year in unearned revenue. Well, that 10,000 was collected when and earned when? It was collected last year. It was last year's ending balance of unearned revenue. And that 10,000 will be earned this year. So add the 10,000. And what you earned this year is 370,000, which is letter C. So when you see a question, cash basis to accrual, you need your starting point. In this case, cash collected. And then you wanna know collected when, earned when. And the 10,000 was collected last year and earned this year. So add it, because it's not already in the 400,000, but it was earned this year. The 40,000 was collected this year in year two but won't be earned until year three because it's the ending balance of unearned revenue. So what you earned in year two would be 370. So hopefully you're taking good notes and the secret to passing the CPA exam is you look at a question like this, you make up the next one. That's right, you anticipate what the next question is going to be based on the question that you just saw. So just change one of the numbers and go ahead and solve it and see how you do. For example, we're going to change the unearned revenue of 10,000 beginning balance for the year, 10,000. Let's make that 50,000. Let's just make that change together. So all we're going to do is change one number because this is what the CPA exam is going to do. They're going to take a question that you've seen, change a number here, maybe a number there. And if you do that, then you're thinking the way they do, and that's got to be good for you. So we're going to change this 10,000 to 50,000, and that's the beginning balance of unearned revenue. Starts off with 50,000, ends the year with 40,000, and they collected 400,000 in cash. So we start there. That's our starting point, 400,000 collected this year. Now, tell me about the 40,000 ending balance of the unearned revenue. Collected when, earned when. The 40,000 was collected in year two, won't be earned until year three. So subtract that, we're down to 360. Now the 50,000 beginning balance of unearned revenue Collected when, earned when. The 50,000 was collected last year. But it's going to be earned this year. So add the 50,000. And what do we get for earned revenue in year two? The answer would be 410,000. Now, I don't want you to memorize this. I want you to ask yourself, collected when, earned when, and then answer that. 
And then when you understand the question that you've seen, make up your own. Remember what we said a little earlier, that cash basis revenue to accrual basis revenue, start with cash collected, that's your starting point. Then it's the change in the receivable balance and then the change in the unearned revenue. That will give you your revenue earned for the current year. Now the questions we did, we had either a change in unearned revenue or we had a change in accounts receivable, but we didn't have both of them in the same question. What about the CPA exam? Are they going to have both of them in the same question? Oh yeah, you know they will. Here's the kind of question I would expect you're going to see on a CPA exam. They not only give you the cash collected, they're also going to give you the change in receivable. You're going to have to take that into account and the change in the unearned revenue account. Both of them are going to be important to solve cash basis to accrual basis. Your starting point is you received 60000 in cash. What do they want to know? How much is accrual basis revenue? So here's your homework. I want you to work this problem. Tell me how much accrual basis rent revenue is. You're just going from cash basis to accrual basis. Doesn't matter if it's service revenue or rent revenue. It's the change in receivable and the change in the unearned that you've got to take into account. And in the comments, I want you to let me know what you think the answer is. And let me know if you want me to make a part two of this video where we get into cash basis to accrual basis expenses and then cash basis to accrual basis net income.